What's going on everyone? My name is John Petroselli and today I'm presenting two amazing American built saxophones from the classic era of jazz, the Con Transitional and the King Super 20. Classic American made horns have been overlooked for a long time and with renewed interest around what really makes a jazz saxophone, I thought I'd show you two epic instruments that really help set the standard. Before I jump into it, let me take a moment to let you know about my new project, Shore Sax. Shore Sax is a vintage saxophone sales company specializing in curating rare saxophones for clients. The company's focus is providing exceptional service to musicians and collectors who are sp seeking specific brands, models, and unique saxophones for performance, collecting, and investment. At Shore Sax, we are building a brand identity that reflects musical freedom, vintage flair, with surf and beach-inspired thematic elements. Click the link in the description of this video for more information, and don't forget, surf for your sound with Shore Sax. All right, so first up, we have this transitional con, a saxophone that sits right in the middle of con's evolution from the New Wonder 1 and 2 series to the beloved 10M model. If you don't already know, CG Con Limited was a renowned manufacturer known for producing high quality professional instruments dating back to the late 19th century. What sets their saxophones apart and makes them worthy of interest is the perfect blend of traditional craftsmanship and their overbuilt design language, especially when it comes to their ergonomics. Check out this neck. With nearly every saxophone ever built, the curve of the tenor saxophone neck through, through repeated use, and let's be honest, abuse, will lead to what's known as pull down, especially when you end up jamming the mouthpiece onto the neck when the horn is attached to the body. You're creating tension in the angle of the neck, which you can tell when the metal on either side of the neck begins to show visible creasing and ripples. It's just not possible on this con who installed a skyscraper sized beam across the underbelly of their neck, ensuring it would take something like throwing it off an apartment building to bend. So this transitional con has exceptional response combined with unparalleled tonal brilliance, which is achieved through the lightness of its construction. Many times when I'm working with students who have only played on contemporary instruments like Yanagazawa tenors, for example, they've never experienced the instrument vibrating in their hands because contemporary horns are just too thick and too heavy to do so. Hand built in the 1930s, this transitional tears down the stereotype of the bowler hat and dance hall vibe and makes me think of Mark Shim going for blood with VJ Iyer or Troy Roberts tearing it up in a funk soul setting. Just take a look at the size of this bell and just the overbuilt nature of everything that you see and touch on this instrument. This horn is ready for action. Next up is my personal King Super 20, a saxophone that stormed onto the scene in the 1940s and quickly earned a reputation as the go-to instrument for many jazz greats. The design developed through six main series from the 1940s all the way through the 80s, and it was gradually tweaked and updated by King in their design. Mine is what's known as a Series 1A transitional. You can instantly tell because of the double socket neck, which was meant to improve sealing and response. So you can see that there's actually two inner levels, the outer and then the inner ring that seals onto the body of the instrument. Note that the actual body itself is slightly shorter than a, a traditional tenor saxophone because of that, because the uh, length of the double socket gives you a bit more space. And <clears throat> the removal of the three ring strap that was uh, made popular by the Zephyr Special. The last thing to really note is these amazing pearl touches. So every place your hand touches on this instrument is hand cut pearl that was done by hand for each individual instrument. So in the words of my tech, Rich Casey, the King Super 20, the 1A transitional is the Cadillac, the caddy of saxophone rides. And this horn is feeling absolutely premium in hand. You can also note the gold-plated solid silver neck. That's right, sterling silver, none of this plating nonsense. And with an underslung neck mechanism, which absolutely looks the business. These transitional instruments are rare as hen's teeth, 
because Selmer filed suit against King for their copy of the left-hand pinky stack on the 1A transitional horns. So this is really a best of all worlds instrument since you get a contemporary left pinky stack along with some of the best ergonomics and one of the most powerful and interesting sounds ever created for the saxophone all in one package. And just check out the hand engraving on this bell. Absolutely gorgeous. As the success of the Super 20 took off, King added a sterling silver bell as an optional feature nicknamed the Silver Sonic, which they advertised as adding resonance and response to the overall tone. Regardless of any perceived sonic changes, let's be honest, these are some of the most beautiful horns ever made and merit inclusion in any collection just on aesthetics alone. Every time Joe Lovano comes to Cleveland, I'm living outside of Cleveland teaching at Oberlin Conservatory right now, he's bringing a silver sonic with him and that's enough for me to want to check them out. But just as an aside, we all know that Charlie Parker recorded most if not all of his legendary albums on a King Super 20. Now let's get down to the meat of it, the performance. For reference, I'm playing the melody Good Bait by Tad Dameron with Ishimori Reeds and a Dukoff stubby seven star clone that's been done up by my main man, Tommy Okioto. And you can see that I am using a Roberto's Wovo ligature, which I highly recommend if you are playing on a metal mouthpiece. Here we go. such an awesome awesome instrument it just feels like i'm spraying sound around and it's such an incredible feeling all right let's give this king a whirl <laughs> Woo. 
There's a lot more to be said about these incredible instruments, but I'm putting it out there to my viewers. Which one do you like best? Are you interested in true pop, funk, jazz, purpose-built instruments that were handmade in the States? Maybe you've begun to check out some other makers of legendary horns I didn't cover in this video, like the Boucher, Top Hat, and Cane, or the Martin Handcraft series. Let's continue the conversation, and remember, keep the reed wet. Until next time, over and out. You know what, I totally forgot to mention this, but one of the reasons why the con is gonna sound like nothing else is because it's got rolled tone holes and every other instrument virtually has drawn tone holes. And that is a rabbit hole for another day, but rolled tone holes are a big deal and they can save your pads as well as add brightness and power potentially to your sound.